Inside Science. How close are we to a COVID-19 vaccine? Well, three high-profile projects published their progress this month, each with the same aim – to train the immune system to recognise the SARS-CoV-2 virus, then produce protective antibodies against it. But each project has approached the problem in a different way. In the US, the company Moderna have designed a system that hijacks human cells, forcing them to produce a specific spike protein that's characteristically found on the surface of the virus. The cells then release these newly made spikes into the body, where they do no harm, but can teach the immune system what to look out for. Moderna tested its approach on 45 people. They found it was safe, and so far, eight of the test subjects have shown an increase in the amount of protective antibodies in their blood. What we don't yet know is if it'll actually protect people against the real virus. And we need to bear in mind that this is preliminary data. It's yet to be peer-reviewed. Meanwhile, a team from Oxford University in the United Kingdom is trying a different tack. They've taken a chimpanzee adenovirus, which might normally give you a mild cold, and they've genetically engineered it to carry the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Now, the researchers have only just started testing this vaccine on humans, but they have released preliminary data from monkeys. Rhesus macaques were given the genetically modified adenovirus, then, along with the control group, they were infected with SARS-CoV-2, and the vaccinated monkeys showed fewer symptoms of COVID-19. But both groups still had similar amounts of SARS-CoV-2 in their nasal secretions, so it's possible that the vaccinated monkeys could still pass on the infection. And scientists in China used yet another kind of vaccine, this time taking the actual SARS-CoV-2 virus from recovering patients, chemically deactivating it, and giving it again to macaques. The inactivated virus, now harmless, did successfully stimulate some immunity in those monkeys. Now, all those three techniques train the body's immune system to produce protective antibodies for itself. But two other studies this month showed that it's possible to produce those antibodies artificially. And when those artificial antibodies were administered to both cultured cells and specially engineered mice, they protected against infection. Now, that is a long way away from human testing, but were this approach to be successful, it could allow treatment of those who already had the disease, unlike a vaccine, which is just preventative. All in all, there are loads of brilliant ideas for possible therapies flying around right now, but coronavirus science is treading a difficult line. The desire to share data quickly to find solutions fast is conflicting with the need to thoroughly check and confirm each result. So although these discoveries are exciting, we shouldn't get our hopes up just yet, as evidenced by the cautionary tale of chloroquine. Chloroquine has been considered a possible treatment, but four papers out this month report no overall improvement after giving chloroquine to a combined 15,858 COVID-19 sufferers. And on top of that, two papers have observed that chloroquine-treated COVID-19 patients show more heart arrhythmias, suggesting it could actually be dangerous. But the world of science hasn't been all coronavirus. Let me leave you with something a little bit different. What on earth is this bumblebee doing? That's right, it's taking a moment to munch down on a leaf. And it leaves behind these little holes. Why? Are the leaves especially tasty? Does this bee bear that plant a particular grudge? Well, it turns out that bumblebee-bitten plants actually flower sooner than their unbitten neighbours. And by chewing away in this bizarre fashion, the bees are actually bringing forward their access to the nectar. And even though it looks like a simple hole punch through the surface of the leaf, when the researchers tried to replicate it mechanically, the effect wasn't nearly as strong as when the bumblebees broke through themselves, suggesting there's much to learn from these bees' behaviour, and bringing up the tantalising prospect of a new way to control a flower's budding and blooming. And I'm afraid that that's all we've got time for. But there were actually tons of amazing animal discoveries this month, from how sharks flee bigger sharks to bejeweled and aggressive 
deep sea worms. And you can find all those stories on the Inside Science website. Stay safe. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.